fact or fiction, immobilizing the ligand in an optical biosensor experiment alters the interaction. Most often the answer is no, it doesn't. But before we dig into the details, let's address the word immobilize. It's a word used historically with optical biosensors, but I think it's misleading and creates a misconception about what is ultimately going on on the surface of the chip. Per Merriam-Webster, the definition of immobilize is to reduce or eliminate motion of, or to prevent freedom of movement by mechanical means. This is not what is happening at the sensor surface. Most vehicle sensor chips have a dextran-based surface. The surface is a hydrogel that is free, not static. It's fluid-like and dynamic, resembling something like kelp on an ocean floor. There are also two main approaches to attaching a ligand to the surface. On the right-hand side of this slide, you can see capture. This is where researchers capture and orientate the ligand on the surface using an affinity tag like his tag, biotin tag, or an FC. It's a non-covalent approach, and it's generally reversible, with streptavitin and biotin being the notable exception. On the left-hand side, we have the second approach, covalent or direct immobilization. This involves irreversible chemical attachment of the ligand to the surface, usually to the carboxymethyl groups on the CM series sensor chips. The ligand remains on the sensor surface throughout the lifetime of the sensor chip. To attach the ligand to the surface, this approach may exploit amine, thiols, either native or introduced, or aldehyde groups attained by oxidation of cis diols on the ligand. Now, regardless of which approach you use, the ligand is not static on the surface. It retains its mobility and rotation, maintaining the conformational entropy of the molecule. Occasionally, if researchers use a covalent strategy to attach the ligand to the surface, the binding site can become occluded or blocked, or the ligand itself may be unstable in the conditions used. These are issues that capture-based approaches don't have. But like they say, the proof is always in the pudding. The literature has many examples that demonstrate how immobilizing one binding partner doesn't alter the interaction. For example, Papalia and others compared Biocore SPR to ITC, a solution-based technique. The researchers determined the affinities of 10 small molecules that bind to the same enzyme. They measured the same affinities whether the enzyme was in solution or bound to the surface. The paper also used stop flow kinetics, which is a very short window of measurable kinetic events compared to biocore systems. But for those molecules that fit within this narrow range of stop flow kinetics, it showed virtually identical kinetic behavior between the stop flow measurements in solution and the biocore kinetic measurements. Additionally, work by Navratilova showed identical results between KDs determined by vehicle system and kinetics of inhibition. Her work looked at whole cell experiments for a panel of roughly 20 small molecule inhibitors of seven transmembrane receptors. And finally, Gianetti also ran a similar experiment comparing inhibitory IC50s to vehicle KDs with a 0.98 correlation. So to summarize fact or fiction, does immobilizing or attaching one binding partner alter the interaction? The answer is clearly fiction.